to do it successfully. Not a bad start to begin with, that's for sure. And to me, this play says our guy is better than your guy's up. Because you know a player of his stature, he won't just be single covered all game long. He's going to be with multiple people. And right away, they told the other team, guess what? He's just better. A nice run there, nine yards. And it'll be second down. The Dolphins now are two and five to start play. And they were winners their last time out, so they'll be looking to make it two in a row. And so much about football, partner, comes down to mindset. Being in the right frame of mind and the best way to get in that good frame of mind winning so they come in feeling good they've got the home crowd behind them i think they're going to be tough to beat in this one right back to h on second down and he'll get it down on the plate of the 37 two yards on the pickup and that's all they needed to move the sticks second and one if people want to run the football this is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there pick up the first down Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's Tua. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Bengals are going to take over at their own 41. Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it, and the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy, and can he step into a throw? And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. The Bengals drive about to get going. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. You talk about this Miami defense. They played extremely well last week in that win over the Packers. No matter what coverage was called, they were in the hip pockets of the receivers all game long. I mean, they were running the routes with them. Turned out, they were right there on every single ball thrown and came away with five interceptions. Here we go, here From we go. the 46-yard line, a second down and six. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. And that's a run that will energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. On one, ready? On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. This defense for the Dolphins, they played extremely well last week in that win over Green Bay. No matter what coverage was called, they were right in the hip pockets of the receivers all game long, step for step, running their routes with them. Turned out they were right there every time the ball was in the air, and they came away with five interceptions in that one. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. Here we Ball go. on the 36 now. Here's second and six. Here we go. Burrow looking to pass. Oh, just a desperation heave there, and it's intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. And the Dolphins are going to take over once again at their own 37-yard line. So this is something we didn't see at all from this offense in the victory last week. That's a turnover. They didn't have any, but giving the ball away here in the opening quarter. I love the surprise in your voice because it's exactly what you stated. Didn't see it last week, but it's a key to their win. And it'll be a key to this game as well, protecting the ball. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football, and he's taken down. Trey Hendrickson just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. You've caught plenty of games in your career. Do you believe in momentum, my man? I do, and I think we're seeing it right here. Oh, there's no doubt about it. The run that he's been on. How about that? Three sacks in a game a week ago, and another one right here. Oh, he's feeling it in a big way. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Now, a pass 
this. It's taken in by Hill. He's to the 15. And finally down at the 9-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. And even 60 yards. Here we go now on first and goal. Now Tua on the bootleg here. Out to his left. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. The sack will push him back only a couple yards, but certainly not what they were hoping for on first and goal. On any first and goal, the real estate to work with for the offense is really cut down, and the defense knows it. So they often bring heat and pressure, which they did on this play. Got him down for a loss. Not a big one, but any loss of yardage in this position is tough for an offense. They get five on the run, but it leaves them with a tough third and goal forthcoming. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop. Ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. They'll try and run it with A-Chan. I'm looking down from our booths. You can tell this crowd wants him to go for it right now. <laughs> and believe me, he knows it. And he's weighing that through his head right now. Actually trying to filter that out because this needs to be a cold decision by him. Not influenced by the crowd. Not influenced by outside factors. Does he believe in his team enough to go for it right here? I think he's going to reward the crowd and do it. And if he doesn't get it, they have to go the full length of the field. Uh, we'll see. So fourth Jason down, Sanders Tua departs, on and on is Jason on Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. From the right hash and a bit of a tight angle. The kick by Sanders is good. So three points on the board. It's easy to feel what you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you're running, don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And they are over 500 for the season, 4-3. and three. They got back above 500 with a victory last week. And, Charles, you think this is a very important week for them, do you not? I certainly do, because when you start to do the math, and, yes, I'm using my fingers to count, if you're 4-4 four and four at the midway point, let's say you're saying 10 wins is your cutoff line for a playoff berth. It's usually right around that number. A loss here, all of a sudden you've got to go six and two down the stretch just to reach ten wins. That means this game is vital. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. So from the 36 now, first and 10. 11, 11. Now Burrow. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. That time, multiple defenders getting pressure. And it's a loss of six. Well, you don't usually get a sack from a nose tackle spot, but we got one there. No, we don't. And a lot of the times in passing situations, they end up off the field anyway. So how happy was he to work his way back to the quarterback and put him on the ground? He's going to end up with a nickname after something like that, some big jelly or something <laughs> like that. This one could point to Yoshi Box. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks. 
that because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. and He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. And he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. So rare to see any quarterback toss back-to-back -to -back interceptions in the NFL, regardless of status or experience. Whether it's him personally or just the offensive game plan, I think this defense is reading something out there, and they're holding the upper hand. Now A-Chan on first and 10. And down to the 41. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks, allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Here's second and seven. Looking to pass to him. And for the right side here, complete. Crosses over out of bounds. 23 yards to pick up there. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Here's a second and eight. Again, it's A-Champ. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. He was brought down by Jordan Battle. That's a gain of four. Brings up third. Third and five. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. Steps away to his left. That's going to be caught at the 10 yard line. And it's not going to be enough here. A gain of four, about two feet short of the marker. Fourth down. He was out there waving his arms, and when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is, because you got to get his attention, because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found the right spot for the completion. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Sanders' kick is good, and they're able to double their lead in this first half. It's six to nothing. They already had the early lead, and they get the interception, Charles, and now they add three more with the field goal. Yeah, they're in control of how this game is playing out so far. You mentioned the early lead. Now they're expanding on it, getting plays on both sides of the ball. A winning recipe if they can keep this up. This fielded right at the goal line. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. He's past the 30. He will score. Touchdown, Bengals. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him. Kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam, and he got a full head of steam there. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And they take the lead here at 7-6. to six. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. Here comes the return from the very back of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback.
first down Miami as they get set to start the drive. Now they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach is talking to his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday they'll press it a little bit. This might be the case. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Throwing now is Chungavailoa. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is a real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Second and ten. Running left, HN. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Five yards, now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. All right, come on. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Here's Tonga Bailoa to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Here's Aaron Sipos out now to punt on fourth down. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. Taken in at the 22. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Bengals take over first and 10. Here we go. The Bengals drive about to get going. Well, still early in this one, Charles, but the last time this offense was out there, they threw their first interception of the ball game, so trying to avoid repeating that mistake here on this drive. And to put a positive spin on it, at least it happened in the first half and not in a close game in the fourth quarter, but you're absolutely right, partner. One of the last things this offensive quarterback wants to witness again in this game. Kind of an obvious question, go, Charles, but anything you try to avoid after your first pick or you say it's one interception, we're still in the first half, I'm about to do the same thing. I think you want to avoid playing scared, you know, and put it into the mind of the quarterback that you've lost confidence in him. Make sure you get some throws that he's going to be able to complete, make him feel good about himself, and continue to run your offense. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. I'm one, right? Here's a handoff out of the gun. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. And quickly, they get to the line. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Here's a diving catch right side. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. I felt that one all the way up here. How about that big man laying out and making that catch? Yeah, that wasn't a 180-pound wideout. That was a tight end. On oh, first and 10, Joe Burrow. Open man is Yoshi Boss. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can go, live with go. that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, hey, 15 yards it. after go. the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. And Burrow oh, going to change the play. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. 
You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to 11, the ball 11, 11. and limit that gain. 11, MP, tight. Here's Burl. Wide open receiver complete. And all the way down inside the five to the four. That puts him in excellent position, first and goal after a gain of 19. Here we go. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. 14 to 6. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he'll elect not to run with it. The fair catch will move this out to the 25 yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Here's second and seven now from the 28. And this time they'll just keep this on the ground. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Two and now on first down. Flush to his right. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. Turbo three, turbo three, kick. Oh. On second down, a run by HM. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42 yard line. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. The Dolphins down on the scoreboard, but they'll have it first as we get going in this third quarter.
First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Goblin's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Let's go. From the gun, it's Tua. Oh, the turnover fest continues. Here's another interception. It's DJ Turner who's got it. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six for a Bengals TD. Well, Charles, just some visibly frustrated players and coaches on that sideline right now because those halftime adjustments didn't work. The turnover problems continuing here in the second half, and the defense now sitting pretty comfortably as a result of that pick six. Man, that's a great observation, too, Brandon, because they did make adjustments at halftime. But how about this other group staying a step ahead despite whatever happened in that other locker room? No surprise they're leading, and it's appropriate that those defenders got to add to the lead directly. But no run back here. Fair catch, and this will come out to the 25. Ready. The Dolphins at the line, ready for their next drive. And not the first time that they're coming back out off of a turnover, but the last one really hurt Charles with that pick six. And it feels like the whole team's in fact. There he goes, right side. Inside the 20. And all the way in for the Miami touchdown. Devon Ajan hitting double digits with his 10th rushing touchdown on the year. And the Dolphins are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that will cut the lead to 21-17. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Fielded just outside the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. They'll get 14 on that one. Good for a Bengal first down. Burrow on play action. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 41. Now a handoff, running off, tackle right. They juked him. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. On second down, Burrow. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. 
And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. First down, here's Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And they'll get this down to the 10. 18 yards that time to push him up first and goal. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Now it's Burrow. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. And they call it a loss of a yard there. And this brings up a third and goal. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect him to have more completions to him in this game. McPherson's kick is good. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. down Miami as they get set to start the drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. A run straight ahead with HM. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line. 164 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Third quarter from Miami. This is second and ten. Achan on the counter. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. 
Two are going to throw. And that is incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Bengals drive about to get going. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But we also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. And the goal of the Bucs is a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack, he's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back go. and putting the big guy on the ground? So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. Hands it off out of the gun. And yeah, that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll mean a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. Three quarters in the books. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. Almost out kicked his coverage there. 48 yard punt, but 10 on the return. And it'll be Dolphin football. Ready. The Dolphins at the line, ready for their next drive. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down and three. Tua sets up to pass it. They'll swing this out wide. Here's Achan. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Ready. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A give left side. Here's Achan. 
And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Second down and a yard. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. He'll dump this off to Achan. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 18. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Now correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. To his throw, caught by Higgins. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. This second and four. Here's Tua. Take him back 11 yards on the sack. And that'll bring up third. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Up the middle, a chance. Oh, good move. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. And they're going to try the screen. It's complete. And the Dolphins are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them, go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Oh, and Tua going to be intercepted for the third time. Daxton Hill picks it off. And the Bengals are going to take over at their own two-yard line. Well, I mean, field goals probably aren't going to cut it at this point. This was touchdown or bust, and unfortunately for them, it turned out to be bust. Yeah, they're feeling like they've got to force the issue here, maybe take some chances they wouldn't have earlier in the game. But give credit to this defense. They've really stood tall throughout, and they come up with the interception in the end zone. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Here we go, here we go. Second and six. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to get this from the 6 out to the 12. A pickup of 6 as they double their workspace. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Has to. You said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. The Bengals on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Now it's Burrow. That is caught. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. 
tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. I'm wondering. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. On one, ready? The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. One, one, ready? On fourth down, they'll try and run for it. And this play is going nowhere as he dives to the ground behind the line of scrimmage. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So for Cincinnati, the victory means they'll up their mark to 5-3 and three on the year. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Miami, the struggles intensify as they drop to two and six now on the year. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.